Good morning everyone, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated art time-lapse video for us to take a look at and hopefully learn a thing or two from. Today we are going to be taking a look at this artwork called Hoverbike Repair and basically this illustration is a combination of ideas um, from different sources, well really just from two different sources. Um, so the first source is this photo I obviously have. It's a photo that I took uh, of my old neighborhood. Um, I originally took this photo because I had a different idea in my head and what to do composition wise. Uh, my nephews used to play in the backyard. Um, in that <laughs> this is basically the backyard of our old house right and as you can see there's a basketball ring uh, on top of the garage and my nephews used to play uh, in this particular area a long long time ago and so originally I was thinking of ha of drawing some form of scene that kind of corresponds to their favorite summertime um, activity which is basketball uh, my two nephews just prolifically played basketball every summer um, without fail for like two or three years in a row. It was fun. Um, I was obviously their <laughs> referee. So it was absolutely fun like watching them play uh, and whatnot. And so yeah, that was originally my idea, but then obviously it mutated into something else when I got a prompt from this group that I'm part of. Um, the group I'm part of is Ramen's Sketch Zone group. It's a Discord channel. Uh, we hang out and help each other improve our work, get it on, whatnot. Um, and so basically what happened was in this particular week that I basically created this piece, um, which was all the way back in November of 2020, uh, the prompt for this particular week, week was... Um, for us to draw our favorite vehicle um so oh yeah and we'll to quickly explain um so in rama sketch zone group we always do prompts um there's monthly prompts there's weekly prompts and so yeah the weekly prompt was for us to draw our favorite vehicle now this is kind of a stretch because I, a i don't really have a favorite vehicle of any sort i mean any car that just works and takes me to places is going to be my favorite vehicle but um what i actually meant is that when i was prompted to draw my favorite vehicle they didn't really specify whether this vehicle needed to be real or not so um for like a period of two years i'd say around 2018 to like 2020 i i was very very much obsessed with hover bikes and i don't know why i just kept drawing them over and over again they kept appearing in some of my illustrations and so lo and behold i decided that i was gonna do an illustration of a hover bike um for this particular prompt um because again like i said they didn't really specify whether or not i should draw something that is real so yeah i decided to draw a very futuristic very sci-fi very non-realistic because obviously there's no such thing as a hover bike at all um so yeah that's what i ended up doing is basically i ended up illustrating a horror bike and just to kind of you know um basically reflect back on the original idea of like my nephews playing in the backyard and whatnot i decided to add a little kid into the scene you know so it kind of just kind of like a way to reflect that part of of the of my idea basically uh what am i trying to say i'm like losing my train of thought i basically wanted to do a shout out to my nephews is <laughs> the best way for me to explain this you know because my original idea was for the nephews but then i ended up changing my idea into something else and so i kind of wanted to incorporate my nephews in there somehow well in this case it ended up just being a nephew um but yeah, so I basically kind of just wanted to draw out this scene that kind of plays out like on a Sunday, you know, your typical dad slash kid moment hanging out together, 
doing father and son moment uh in this case the dad's like repairing his over bike and you know the kid just wants to be with his dad or uncle i guess you could say uncle because i did have nephews i do have nephews and i have a kid my own um so you can say that basically <laughs> it's just my nephew and me hanging out while doing a over bike repair so Anyways, that was really the impetus for this particular illustration was it's an amalgam of uh, these two ideas that I have that just kind of coalesce into this illustration and whatnot. So I wanted to take advantage of the photo that I have because it was already existed or it was already there and I'm like, hey, why not? And then, of course, there was that prompt that says favorite vehicle. And I'm like, yes, please, hover bike. Um, so, yeah. So that's where the idea came from, and that's where, that's how things got started. I guess now would be a great time to really talk about what is going on in the screen, because that is part of what I do. I talk about my ideas, where they came from, and whatnot, and I also talk about the process, which is always, of course, interesting. Um, a lot of it can get very, very boring, because it's a very, it's, it's very repetitive. I pretty much do the same thing over and over again. You know, I do quick sketches, which you could see that there was a quick sketch in my sketch. I did, I basically just traced over my photo is what I ended up doing. And that's great because it's such a time saver for me to do something like that basically, right? Um, so I just did a quick uh, trace of my old photo and then of course the only thing that I really squashed, ugh, sketch out on my own sorry about that but the only thing that I really did sketch on my own is obviously the foreground characters and the hover bike obviously that's from imagination I came up with that I did a quick rough sketch of it and then of course I you know added another layer and I resketch it with a much cleaner line so um and then as soon as I'm done with that, I combine it with the trace of the photo. And then now I am in the middle of my coloring phase, which this is always interesting um, like to look at because sometimes I do techniques that I don't do often. So one of the techniques that I use for this particular illustration is I did a gradient background, which was very surprising when, when I did a preview of this video and then now that I'm looking at it again, I'm like, why exactly did I do <laughs> that particular technique? Because I typically don't. I typically don't do a gradient background. But for this particular illustration, I did. So I started out with a gradient background. And then I moved over to my palette um, selections. I specifically chose one that has pink and green in it. I guess I wanted to play off those two colors. Um, really, it's not so much pink as it's i think it was more red rather than pink but somehow in the illustration it kind of ended up really looking very very pinkish um and so using that palette that i got from color palette cinema i grabbed my random mech brush set to vary its hue and basically i just laid down a bunch of colors and just went to town as you can see all the colors are kind of messy and whatnot and there's good reason for this because what ends up happening is basically i i do all this weird tweaks with colors and then i do all this weird tweaks with the layers some of them are like in half opacity or some of them are like really low opacity um and i basically just kind of just tweak all of them in just you know different settings until i kind of get a look that i like and as soon as I like that look, I merge them all in one layer and then I start smudging things around. And basically the idea of the whole smudging thing is so that I could get a base paint where I could do all my detailing on. So you could see me uh, about to start my smudging process. Right now I'm actually doing a marquee selection of my foreground characters because I really wanted to save this area. Um, specifically obviously because they are the focal point of the illustration so i really do want to save them um i, I do this sometimes because sometimes i get carried away with the whole smudging thing uh, when i start doing my smudge i really really try to keep it as recognizable shades but sometimes i kind of do get overboard with the whole smudging thing 
that sometimes the shape just kind of get lost and so that's the reason why i kind of isolated the background from the foreground just to make sure that when i do my smudging thing that i don't lose too much of the characters um see so you can see me go gung-ho with my smudging right now uh i'm doing some light tweaks i didn't realize i added a few color dodges in there to brighten things up but yeah and so basically what i'm going to be doing is i'm just going to be smudging the background as soon as i'm done smudging the background i'm going to do I'm going to invert the selection so that I could focus on my foreground. I'm going to smudge that. And then as soon as I'm done smudging that, I'll end up with a base paint that I'm going to do my detailing on. So yeah, let's go watch the show for a little bit. Um, and then I'll come back on once I start the detailing process.
so at this point in time i'm pretty much done detailing the background um it went by real quick uh it was like what maybe like four minutes of me just kind of editing it of course in real time uh it would have been like half an hour or something to that effect but it didn't really take me that long um I also had the great benefit of looking at a photo, uh, looking at photo references always help expedite your process. Uh, that's the reason why it's always highly recommended to be looking at a reference because it just helps you get the look down much, much quicker, obviously. Um, so it was very, very helpful that I did have that reference. So I kind of knew how to detail it quickly. And I also knew that since it was a background, I didn't really need to zoom in and detail very much. So obviously I kept things very, very loose and very, very sketchy. Uh, you can see that I used the chalk brush and pretty much this whole entire illustration. And um, the background is, um, is predominantly the chalk brush well I, I take it back I, I use the chalk brush in pretty much everything because I realized I'm doing the foreground characters with the chalk brush too but the biggest difference with the foreground characters is that I'm using a much smaller brush uh, the size is obviously a 60 versus something very big and when you have something that small obviously everything is just gonna look cleaner and finer versus it being sketchy looking compared to the background so yeah but I really wanted it to be like a contrast too you know so uh, so yeah for a great period uh, in 2020 2021 I used a lot of the chalk brush um, I recently discovered well not re recently because it was probably like a year back when I discovered it but I didn't realize that uh, the airbrush um, is such a great brush for regular use um, especially if I really wanted to go for like a soft effect and whatnot so I've been actually in an airbrush kick lately instead of like the chalk brush um, but I, I kind of switch back and forth between those two as my favorite detailing brush so yeah but Anyway, so uh, talking about detailing, my detailing is a three-step process. I basically delineate my edges, which basically means I make my edges sharper so that my shapes read clearer. Uh, I accentuate my shadows. If my shadows needed a little bit of darkening, I would darken it, obviously. And then I add highlights. And I basically repeat that process over and over again in parts throughout my illustration. So obviously in this particular one, I started out in the background, slowly worked my way into the foreground. And now we are taking a look at me detailing the foreground. And really when I have my base paint, it's really, really fun because I can just go loose and just kind of just wing it. You know, I mean, like a lot of the details in the hover bike was just made up on the spot. Like I didn't really had a vision in my head, like a definitive idea of what it was going to look like. I was just like, there's some mark there and there's some mark there. Let's put those two marks together and kind of make something out of those two marks. And lo and behold, I got really fancy looking details especially like the undercarriage of the hover bike you'll see like a lot of like machinery looking things going on in there and so it kind of looks like there's a function in in all the sketches that i do even though it's all just kind of rough and loose and like non-definitive like i don't really know what they're supposed to do but it kind of looks like they do something right so so yeah um the detailing is very much fun a very much fun process once it gets to that part of the illustration i could just be you know having fun and whatnot and that's what i like best about uh speed paints because it goes real quick and real fast you know and you can just be very very expressive with your brush strokes and your techniques and just with things in general so yeah i was very very expressive with this particular illustration and i love it now, uh, going to my critiques, because I always do a self-critique, um, and I always just try to analyze my illustrations and whether I consider it a success or not. Uh, there are illustrations that I still, that I call love, I guess, or I would say that I'm in love with the illustration, even after 
some time has passed those kind of illustrations are always the best so obviously this one i'm kind of like half and half i'm kind of like in love with it because i really really love the subject matter um i, I really like the look of it i, I really like the romantic aspect of it and when i mean romantic i'm not talking about romantic love i'm talking about like romanticism in art uh, for anyone who's not very clear on what the romantic period is in art the art period went through romanticism and most people think that you know the romantic period has something to do with love it really doesn't didn't actually have to do with love the romantic period in art had something to do with glamorizing everyday activities so in this case the everyday activity that we're taking a look at is just a guy repairing his bike his overbike and he's hanging out with a kid his kid his nephew or whatever and he's just enjoying the moment while repairing the bike it's nothing special it's nothing extravagant it's not like a like a really cool event going on it's just very very simple that happens every day and it's being glamorized it's being romanticized and so that is basically what happened in the romantic art period um a lot of the subject matter were people in their everyday lives specifically farmers a lot of the farmers got painted <laughs> during this period because before this period you know the only subjects in art were like the the royal people the the rich people basically and then the romantic period came and then the artists started drawing just like normal average people like farmers and whatnot and they call it the romantic period because everything was romanticized and this is what this is this everyday scene got romanticized and so i really really love that aspect of that illustration but the one thing i don't like about it <laughs> is the weak my biggest 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 weakness if you guys watch any of my videos you guys will know that i have a huge huge weakness which is colors i'm very very weak with colors and this is one of those illustrations where the colors are just uh, <laughs> that's all i can say <laughs> i don't really need to go much more in that about that i could analyze as to the reason why this wasn't super successful i i could tell you right off the bat it's because there's a lot of cyan in it I could have played off the red and the green and the red and green playing off against each other would have you know done or would have been a really good contrast that would have made a really good color combo throwing in the sign in there was just uh i think that's a little off so that's my first hand opinion after looking at this uh for the first time in like a while and just kind of just thinking about it while speaking uh, I, I really do think that the cyan could have thrown it thrown the whole color scheme off i really think the blue and the green and the red kind of place off well with each other i'm not too sure about the yellow too come to think of it i mean the yellow looks good with the whole glowing yellow thing to kind of signify that that hover bike is floating that's kind of cool i would have to say um but as for the actual color yellow itself that's debatable so i would have to say the color yellow and the color cyan i'm not sure they play very very well with this illustration and so maybe that's the reason why my feelings for this particular piece is kind of eh, you know could be better i don't know maybe it's something i would have to re revisit later or maybe i won't <laughs> i have so many projects that i'm always engaged in so but anyways that's my overall assessment of this piece love the romantic aspect of it do not love the color so much but hey that could be your learning lesson so thank you guys for watching this with me i hope you do learn a thing or two from it i will catch you guys in the next video like and subscribe good night